Okay, so hello uh, and a very good afternoon. So right now we are looking at the probabilistic modeling. Okay, so what's the difference between this probabilistic modeling and also deterministic modeling as how we already discussed in detail on the previous lesson, right? Okay, so if you notice, all the problem when we deal with deterministic uh, uh, deterministic modeling such as linear programming it is a uh, once it's not one size fits all but it is a straightforward problem meaning that you are not dealing with chances you are not dealing with probabilities okay what you have is what you see you have one problem you have the numbers and then you are able to find the expected results that you want okay you only want to know the unit that you would like to produce you want uh, to know, even though you have feasible regions okay but that does not mean um, anything much of the chances okay of the probability of a randomness or the risk of not having been able to fulfill the uh, certain probabilistic in nature uh, that one that, that that is why we call that as a deterministic problems but now in probabilistic modeling okay we are talking more on the situation where you don't know okay you don't know what is it uh, what will you expect uh, you don't know exactly the points that you have okay what you have is only your historical values what you can do is just some sort of like a forecast in the future okay but it is not something that is written in stone okay so that is why we have the probabilistic modeling unfortunately in most of the area or the scenario this is what we have to do okay we have to deal with probabilistic uh, problem all right because that is what our life is normally we are dealing more with uncertainties all right so that is why we address this problem uh, these problems all right so uh, in this series okay we uh, um, categorize the probabilistic modeling into uh, only few different criteria uh, today we are focusing more on the simulation and there are actually lots of different simulation but what we want to focus in this topic is just solely on the uh, Monte Carlo analysis all right uh, it's a simulation where you can uh, do it in a uh, many many times all right okay and you find the average of your many time simulation and then later we are looking at the queuing system which part of the probabilistic nature that we can foresee okay based from the queuing model uh, and then by the end of the day uh, we are going to touch uh, a little bit all right on the markov chain uh, markov chain is also uh, one of the most uh, important <laughs> problem in probabilistic modeling now uh, in the markov chain situation you are able to see for example um, if let's say you're coming from a low income group your parents comes from low income group for example how is it uh, in in a general case uh, would you go move up outward okay would you move st step uh, further from uh, your original stage uh, original stage meaning that uh, your low income group for example is it uh, possible or if you are addicted to gambling for example why gambling is not suit uh, for mathematicians all right because we are able to foresee in the future in a long run if you are uh, gamble uh, and then your gambling opponent uh, is the casino okay by right you are not going to win big <laughs> okay so the possibility is like um, nothing uh, there's no possibility for you even in fact to uh, gamble your money with the uh, casino okay so this that that one is a uh, part of the uh issue that we're going to address in the markov chain okay so uh for this first series i'm going to focus just on the simulation part all right so um uh, i need to remind you guys okay um we are referring to the book by uh, 
what we call the name eh? we referring to the book by uh, Bender I think Render okay by Render okay so I really um I really wish you can get this book okay because this book is a very extensive book and you can learn a lot from this book okay so we start our discussion first about the process of simulation okay so if you notice the process of simulation is a little bit similar to the process of uh, mathematical modeling right it's just that in simulation your process now is a little bit more focused because you are just focusing on the probabilistic problem in nature so it, but the framework is just about the same you need to define the problem first and then you need to identify what is actually the variable that you need to consider and then you need to construct the simulation model by by constructing the simulation model only then you know actually what is it that you want to study Mm, all right, because if not, you don't know uh, what is it you want to attack in your uh, problems. All right, and then once you construct the simulation uh, model, uh, then only you start to specify the values, okay, which variables that you want to test, and then how you're going to conduct this simulation, okay, meaning that which value or which variable this does actually a has some random. <laughs> which which value in the variable that has some randomness in it uh, okay so once you identify the randomness on your variables only then you can conduct the simulation and then later that's easy you just examine the results and you select the best course of action okay so in our problem now okay i'm going to just focus on how you're going to construct okay the simulation all right uh, the examine results um uh, best course of action that one uh you can uh try find on your own okay um i need to remind you again on the left hand side at the bottom uh these are the the name of the book that we refer to okay the quantitative analysis for management is a very good book okay so we really recommend you to get this book okay so uh, this is the advantage and also i'll show a little bit of the disadvantage be before we start with the whole procedure of simulation okay the most advantageous pro uh, advantageous um, element for us to do the simulation because it is straightforward all right why it is straightforward because you don't need to understand or you don't need to know a lot more of the information that you want okay it's just like a especially if you start using the software it is a very straightforward uh, problem okay and then flexi meaning that um you can do it again and again and again you can change the variable you can do whatever you want uh, because you are dealing with a machine right okay so uh, not much cost cost meaning that uh, not time uh, but not much not much cost in the sense of um, your effort okay uh, not much cost on that uh, that incurred to you okay uh, and then the most advantage is especially when we are dealing right now okay because right now uh, there is no such thing as um, it's very difficult for us to find a supercomputer, for example. Uh, and then your notebook it has even good power, all right, uh, compared to the previous 10 years down the line, okay. And you can expect in the future the performance of your computer is, of course, not going to decrease, it's going to improve over time. Uh, then, then only you can simulate a lot more, a lot more, a lot more, then that will be okay. That's why if you notice, uh, there are a lot of simulation that has been conducted in the previous years, okay, not in the early years, meaning early years, you didn't see much happen, uh, for example, especially uh, if your parents uh, go into the stock markets and they want to see the analysis of the uh daily returns or uh, their daily closing price, for example, and how they perform over time, you cannot do it. Uh, last time, it is very difficult for you to even get the historical data, okay, and uh, let alone to do the simulation of your uh, market price behavior, okay, but right now, it is easy, okay, and then the data is also very freely available, you can only find it how to even screen which one, which data you need and which data you don't actually need and it's just a noise, okay, so your uh, thread or your 
uh, distraction is another different stories. All right. And then one more the advantage, it allows for what if type of question. What if I put extra additional information? What if my variables include a little bit more variable? Okay, so you only need to tweak there and then in your personal space. Okay, uh, for example, if let's say you are dealing with a software, okay, you have another variable, you just add another variable and you can do the simulation all over again. All right, uh, and it does not interfere with the real world system, uh, meaning that the simulation is always on your uh, notebook. And once you are really, really satisfied with, satisfied with your answer, uh, only then you produce your result to make, to mimic, okay, to mimic the uh, real world system. It's not that if you are dealing with a real world system on your own and then you, for example, you want to build a car and then you build a car and then you feel like, oh, this car does not meet the safety criteria and then you dismantle the car and uh, you keep on rebuilding the car again. Uh, that, that is what it means by simulation. You do it one over time, one over time, one again and one again. So if it is in a real world situation i don't think you are able to do that right okay so that is the concept of it uh and the rest of it okay so these are some of the advantage but unfortunately there are also uh the disadvantage okay uh the disadvantage is on the preparation part okay the preparation part okay uh once you have the system or once you have the model, that one is easy, right? Because that one, uh, you just simulate. Okay, but how are you going to really make sure which variables that you want to test? Okay, which variable that actually bothers you? And this variable, how can you attract this variable into a mathematical formulation, for example? And then what's more? How does this variable react? Uh, does this variable follow random number, for example, or is actually follow a normal distribution, or is it actually follow a Poisson distribution, binomial distribution? There are lots of distributions available, right? So that is the complicated part. Uh, that's when you need to do the brainstorming activity. You need to refer back to. Uh, some of the literature, those expert in this knowledge, for example, because uh, every every other problems does not deal with every other. It is not a one size fits all approach. Okay, so it is a very personalized solutions for one for one personalized uh, model or question or problems. Okay, so that is the problem. And then the one more disadvantage, which I think really disturb mathematician, for example, okay, is that once once you are doing simulation, you cannot say that your uh, result is the optimal solution. <laughs> you cannot, okay? Why not? Because it is based um, from a random generated process uh, or it follows some, for example, normal distribution. It is not an exact science, okay? It is just an approximation because normal distribution, random generated, Poisson distribution, all these are just the approximation for you, okay? You assume your behavior follows certain distribution because previously they follow this particular distribution, but uh, in exact thing, you don't even know whether your problem follows this particular distributions, right? But it's better than nothing, isn't it? Uh, so that's why we are doing simulation. It is a better than nothing uh, or try and error approach. Mm, all right. And the rest of it is just um, typical disadvantages. But normally, um, I personally believe in the, uh, the, <laughs> the most disadvantage is the uh, problem does not generate optimal solution. That is something quite disturbing, okay, um, for uh, simulators, all right? So, uh, this is Monte Carlo because uh, once we talk about simulation, okay, there are lots more other methods involved with simulation, but uh, when we talk about simulation, people should know about Monte Carlo simulation. 
Okay, so a uh, Monte Carlo simulation, it based from these steps. Okay, you need to uh, establish your probability distribution. Why that is important? I'm going to show you in the example, easier for us to discuss on the example. Okay, uh, and you can revisit these five different criteria uh, later. And then we'll come back to this if you don't get a certain a uh, certain element in the example later, right? So now we move on to this problem. Okay, we have Harry Auto Tire. Okay, so this also uh, coming from the book by quanti uh, the book of quantitative analysis for management by Render. Okay, let's say Harry uh, sells all types of tires, but he only want to focus on one particular tire. Okay, which is the radial tire account. Okay, because he knows that these radial tire accounts can sell. Uh, okay, large portion of the overall sales comes from this radial tire account. So, uh, Harry knows, okay, this is very important tire uh, among all of the tires. Okay, so he actually want to know uh, the demand, okay, over a period of time. Okay, uh, actually, the daily demand for this particular tire is how good the demand would be like. Uh, okay, so that is the only question. So that's why in the last segment, you uh, you can see over here, he, he, uh, this question mentioned that to see what the demand would look like over a period of time, meaning that in the future, he wishes to simulate the daily demand for a number of days. So that is the only focus that he would like to know. So you can see there are uh, probability involved here, right? Because he don't know the exact solution. What he did know is only this. Mm, okay. He wants to see the future, but he only have this. Okay. What is this? Okay. This is the data. He has the data previous data, 200 days historical data. Okay, he has 200 days historical data. And then this historical data says that in 200 days, okay, the frequency of this company, Harry, okay, the frequency of Harry are not able to sell any tire. Okay, radial tires, right? Just focus on just particular radial tires, okay. No tires that he can sell uh, from 200 days, 10 days he cannot, he cannot sell any unit of tires. In 20 days, all right, he, uh, he is able to sell one tire, okay? In 40 days out of 200 days, okay, he is able to sell two tires in 60 days. Okay, not that in 60 days after the previous, no, no, uh, this is a historical data, meaning that in 200 days, 60 days of the time, uh, okay, 60 days of the 200 days time, he is able to sell three tires and so on. Okay, so this is the only data that he has. So will he be able to calculate or to expect or to forecast okay the uh, tires in most days okay in the future uh, how many tires will he sell all right so that is uh, his main uh, intention here all right so that's the only issues here okay that's the only issue so uh, what should what should he do okay for the first thing he need to Sorry, he need to get, uh, okay, give me some times. Okay, easier for you to see. <laughs> uh, okay, now I get it. Okay. All right. So he need to get, um, sorry. Oh, okay, all right. So now he needs to get uh, the probability of occurrence first. All right, so how to get the probability of occurrence? This one, I think uh, you are very familiar with this, meaning that in 200 times, okay, in 200 times, 10, uh, 200 times, 200 days, 10 days of the time, uh, the demand for tire is zero. 
Okay, so meaning that 10 days out of 200 days, uh, the probability should be 0 0.05. All right, correct? Because by the end of the day, you want to know that uh, when you calculate, you plus all them together, you get one. Uh, okay, so this is uh, how we do it. And then once you do that, uh, for 20 days like this, do the same thing. 20 divided by 200, you get 0 0.01. And the rest comes naturally as this. Mm, Alright, so by the end of the day, you need to test again. Uh, you have 200 over 200 is 1, uh, meaning that the probability occurrence is there. Okay, so now once you have that, what should you do? Okay, so after that, you do the cumulative probability, uh, meaning that you have this and then you have this. You want to see the increment. Does that has any good increment from your previous daily demand? Okay, so the increment is easy, right? You start with 0 0.05 uh, and then you just plus with uh, 0.1, you get 0 0.15. 0 0.15 and then uh, 0 0.15 you, you plus with 0 0.20 you get this one and this one until by the end of the day you get the whole one percent of probability okay because your probability uh, the maximum value for your probability is one right okay and then next Ah, okay, why you need that probability uh, cumulative, okay, why you need that cumulative probability distribution because you want to start to look, uh, to tie them with the random numbers, okay, random numbers that you're going to introduce. So, if you have this, for example, this is just the uh, cumulative probability just now, right, uh, and so on. Okay, look at my right hand side over here. This is all, sorry, it's a little bit messy again. This is all my random number. Okay, my random number, let's say you have 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03. Okay, up until 0, 05, we uh, put 0, 01 until actually 0, 00, just referring to 100. Okay, so easier for you to make the corresponding values for your percentage, right? Uh, so it's easy for you to see. So for example, if let's say, when you have zero daily demand, is this one is actually uh five percent, right? Five percent, five percent, five from five from one hundred. Uh, your value over here is actually zero one, zero two, zero three, zero four, zero five. Uh, that's why it stops until zero five, and then it goes to the uh, daily demand of 1, 0 0.15. Uh, so you can see over here, it starts from 0 06, 0 06, 0 07, 0 08, 0 09, up until you calculate. If you get confused, you calculate one by one by using your hand. Okay, uh, get your hands dirty until 15. Uh, that is referring to your daily demand of 1. And so on until you get the final one. 86 until 100. 100 we ref we refer in we refer it as 00. Okay, so this one is your uh, cumulative probability. Okay, so why this one is important? You can see in the next um, segment over here. Okay, this is important because we want to tie this with this. Uh, okay, tie with this with this and with this. Mm, okay. So by the end of the day, actually we want this only, okay? We want from your right hand side and from your very left, very right, very left and so on. Okay, what is that for? Ha, now we move to the table of random number. Okay, this one is very manual, okay? Uh, normally we don't do this um, manually. We do this uh, using calculator at the least. Or computer at the most okay but uh, just to make you have some idea about how we're going to do it randomly uh, so this is uh, a partial of table of random number there are lots more of it so the idea of doing this random number uh, you just uh, do a similar distribution okay put the same amount of number inside this but do it in a different random ways and you get this okay so by the end of the day you pick this value 
Okay, you pick this random value. For example, uh, you do a 10-day simulation. Actually, in a computer, we don't do 10-day simulation. But for your case, because you want to calculate this manually, we test it by using 10-day simulation. Okay, so for example, day one. We choose any random number. Okay, what do you mean by random? Meaning that if let's say you have these lots of number, you put in a jar uh, and then you pick one and then you get the number 52. Uh, okay, and then this number 52. So your simulated daily demand now, okay, sorry, I have to go back. Uh, you need to remember number 52. Where does that goes? Okay. Oh, uh, okay, here. 52 okay 52 must reside over here right uh, so your 52 in the interval random number actually correspond to the daily demand of three uh, that's why you have this that's why you have this so this comes for your day one if you get confused, you need to revisit my uh, explanation again, okay? Because uh, the first time around, I think uh, the digestive period is a little bit slow. Uh, so, but uh, after you listen to this few times, I think you get it, okay? And then the second random number for day two, uh, you get number three, uh, okay? And so on. And so on. Okay, so always remember your random number here is going back to your interval earlier and then you tie to your number on your left uh, hand side. So these are the, num uh, the daily numbers demand that you have. Once you have all the daily need demand until 10 days, you calculate, oh actually this one is 39. <laughs> okay, you calculate this, you get 39. Okay, meaning that 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 and so on until 39. And then how to do about that? Once you get 39, you take the average of 39. You have 10 day simulation. You have 39 values. Uh, so 39 divided by 10. This is the average daily demand for your tire. Okay, your result 3.9 is based from your simulation. This is what we call a simulation. This is what a Monte Carlo simulation looks like. All right. So, it, see, it is a little bit different with your expect, expected daily demand. Okay, this is the analysis in statistical uh, valuation. Okay, expected daily demand is actually you have the expectation. Okay, for your probability of tire. Multiply with the demand of your tire. Okay, this one just uh, go straight away through your uh, table just now. And then once you have a table just now, you calculate the value inside here and you get 2.95 tires. Alright, this one is the correct expected daily demand. Okay, remember 2.95 tires but your simulated results... You have 3.9 average. It's a little bit different, right? The simulated value, you get 3.9. Whereas your expected value, you get 2.9. You miss by 1. All right? It's quite a lot, actually. Okay. But uh, no need to worry about that. You are talking about the simulation of 10 times. Okay, but true enough, okay, we focus on the uh, concept of normal distribution. By right, by the end of the day, if you make the calculation uh, large, okay, we call the law of large number. If you still remember <laughs> your, statistic, um, your statistics uh, lesson, okay. So, law of large number mentioned that if you keep doing it again and again and again, okay, a lot of time. Okay, uh, meaning that uh, a lot of time, meaning that this one, you repeat thousands of times, okay, it will be more likely that your simulated demand, your 2.9 just now will be quite similar. Uh, it will go very nearly to the expected demand that you have. That's why in a simulation, we are trying to get as many value as we can. Okay, there are reasons behind that, all right? So, that is the concept of uh, doing a Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, but now, we are looking uh, more on the manual part, okay, which is very tedious to do. Okay, that's why in the next uh, video, I'm going to show you how to solve, how to calculate the Monte Carlo simulation by using a software. <laughs> that's why I mentioned here why software is a godsend. 
Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, I'm going to uh, show you the hands-on video on how we can solve the same problem just now. But now we are using the QM for Windows and why software is so much better than calculate all this thing by using your hand or manual. Okay, so I'll see you guys on the next lesson. All the best.